All right. So welcome again to English 101 and 097. My name is Darcy Sturgis. You can call me Miss Darcy, Miss Sturgis. It doesn't really matter to me as long as you're being respectful and kind. Awesome. Uh, so as, as you know, we are all online. Uh, I had not taught online until COVID-19 hit in this, uh, back in March, and I started teaching online because of that. So it's still a little new to me. I'm expecting that we will have some technological challenges at some point throughout the semester, either from my side of things or maybe on your side of things. Uh, and we're going to work our best to get through them and make sure that this class is uh, still helping you succeed in writing. Because that's the real reason you're here. You're here to learn how to uh, be able to write better for college writing. At least that's my broad assumption, right? You might also be here because you have to take the class, right? This is, this is not a course that you can just avoid. The English classes are necessary. So one thing I wanna say to that is I don't care if you like writing. I don't care if you hate it. You might love it. You might think it's the worst thing in the world. It's like pulling teeth and you don't enjoy it at all. And that's okay. From my side, I want you to feel like you're getting the tools you need to be able to write more effectively, to write with stronger purpose, and to feel like your ideas are being expressed clearly and accurately. I also hope that your writing uh, grows so you can meet some of the rigors of the academic writing environment uh, because it's a very specific type of writing uh, and can be a little challenging, especially if you're not familiar with it. So, yes. So let's see, I have a checklist that I'm, I'm checking off here for uh, these things. So, um, in the future, I will be using a function called polls to be asking questions in uh, Zoom. That function is not working today. So uh, again, in the chat box, what I'd like you to do uh, is we're going to briefly uh, introduce ourselves uh, and it is, is going to come in a wave. Uh, but I just want to get a sense of who's there. And I also ask because, you know, I want to make sure you're actually participating at your computer. So um, I'm going to give an example in the chat. But basically what I'm going to do is, is say, like, my name is Darcy Sturgis. And I, let's see, it's a little thing about, and um, that's my second semester with online classes. So the question that I want you to answer is your name and uh, have you taken online classes before? So let's go ahead and take um, a few minutes. Um, go ahead and type in the chat um, and you can, you don't have to do your full name. Again, you could do your preferred name, right? If you say, I, my name's Darcy, but I go by Jessica. Okay, great. Um, introduce how you would like to be called um, and have you taken online classes before? Um, and, and this could be from COVID too, right? It doesn't have to be that it was officially an online class. All right, so we'll have about three minutes here. So everyone just go ahead and answer those questions. All right, Ashley will welcome online. Marcella, yes. Okay, so we've gotten. Mm, on Blackboard, okay, yes. Uh, Blackboard is a little different than Brightspace. Um, I'll welcome T. Okay. Okay. Oh, so Nisha, you have a little more experience. It seems, it seems like a lot of people. Um, yeah, we're about kind of split between 50-50. Half have taken an online class before, half haven't. Uh, great. Um, all 
Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, I'm excited to get to, you, get to know you all over the course of this um, semester. It is definitely a different environment than being in the classroom. Uh, so your participation is what's really going to make this great. Um, Okay, so we yeah have at least a couple people that your your last year of high school your senior year was all online. Oh, I'm sorry, that sucks. <laughs> it's not ideal, but hopefully keeping us safe. Okay, awesome, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing those here. Okay, so we have about fifty fifty taking online classes before. Uh, so. Great, this will be um, some, uh, so for some of you, this may be a refresher, especially if you've taken some classes that have you using um, Zoom or Brightspace or both. Um, and if you haven't taken an online class before, uh, a good thing to be reminded of is that it does involve uh, a lot of personal uh, motivation to be showing up, right? Because it's it's not that we're meeting in class and I can and I can talk with you then, right? It's we're having to purposely really try to make these connections over distance and space, um, and on a platform that we will have a variety of comfort levels. Uh, I try to keep up with technology, but there are moments where I have struggles with it. So. I appreciate your patience with that and I'll have patience with you with when different things kind of arrive. So I am going to now share my screen because we're going to talk about some of the uh, things that you can use for your advantage and some of these I did not touch on in the video of getting started. So I'm going to share my screen here. So uh, in the chat real quick, can I get someone saying, uh, can you see my email screen? Okay, yes, yes, thank you. Great. All right, so when you've logged in onto your email, and I truly hope you're all checking your email regularly, uh, it's, it'll be, it's very important for an online class. Uh, but the cool thing is when you log into um, your Outlook email through the school, up here, uh, top left-hand corner next to Outlook, you'll see the nine grid squares. And if you click on that, you have access to a bunch of Microsoft Office applications. And these uh, you can use online. So if you just open an app like this, now I'm going to right click and open it in a new tab. I can now open Microsoft Word. Um, that's gonna load. And you see there's um, Microsoft Word. This is a great application for typing your documents, uh, PowerPoint. This is good for doing a slideshow presentation. Uh, there are a, quite a few different applications. The ones we will be primarily using in this class are uh, like the main one is Word. We're, we're writing, uh, but we might also use PowerPoint as well at times. But the thing I really want to point is up here, uh, you have Office 365. And again, I'm going to open this link in a new tab just so I can keep things open. You'll see here, now that I've opened Word, I can click to start a blank document, or I have other things that are I've recently done. So if, sorry, get to the right thing. So after I opened this Office 365, um, this is a way for you to download for free um, uh, Office 365. So this is all of the applications. This is a free, uh, the school pays for all of you to be able to download this for free. So you can go here to install Office, and this here is downloading the Office 365 apps. So this is uh, especially good if you have a laptop or a desktop computer. I'll be honest, I have not tried it on a mobile device. I think using just the online web versions, but you know, click on the square and go straight to just a one application, that might be a better option if you're on your phone. But this is free for you, uh, and I highly recommend uh, if, you, if you have a laptop or a desktop to install Office 365 um, onto your computer. 
on it. So Office 365, yes. Okay. All right. So then um, we also have our Brightspace course. Um, and uh, so this course is still being developed. There's some information I'm gonna get from you today that's gonna help me shape the, the future of this course uh, because you all have different strengths that you've brought in with your writing. Some of you may not believe it, but you all have strengths with writing. Uh, and some of you may have different weaknesses, right? Or different areas that you say, I really think I need to learn more of. And we're going to, I'm gonna get some of that information from you today to help plan this course so it's most beneficial to you. Uh, but Brightspace is gonna be where we uh, are doing every single homework thing. Uh, so Brightspace is gonna be a constant thing you need to get it into. Um, and so here, I am on our course homepage. Uh, maybe you've seen this welcome here. Uh, I will say Brightspace is not a perfect system. Um, and it also could be some user error, right? I'm still learning a lot about Brightspace even though I've used it for three years. So uh, you'll see on the homepage announcements. So announcements, if I have to cancel class for any reason, um, I'm putting an announcement up. If I change a due date, if, uh, if I have um, something of general concern or uh, I find a really interesting thing I wanna share with you, I may do it through an announcement. And announcements are sent um, to your email, usually automatically. Uh, here you have the content browser. This section here is the most faulty for me. So um, I don't know if anyone else has Brightspace open, but when I have it open like this, and I'm viewing as a student, and I go to faculty information, it says there's no content to display. And this is false, because uh, there is content that I have posted there. Uh, so that is one way that I just want to point out that if you're not at first finding something on Brightspace, don't give up. It's there somewhere. If you scroll down, you will see um, different calendar things. These are specific due dates. That's a good kind of quick remi reminder that, oh, by August 28, by 11.30 p.m., I need to do my grammar assessment quiz. Um, oh, by the, that time as well, I also have this essay due. Okay, so these due dates can give you a, a heads up so you can plan, right? Uh, I don't know your life schedules, and there is a lot going on right? We have different protests for racial justice. We have COVID-19. We have classes. Maybe we have work. Maybe we have families. Uh, your schedule is going to be a lot on your hands, okay? Uh, I'm going to try to pace out assignments so they're not going to build too much, but really I want you to be able to have, uh, and to feel like you are planning your own uh, work schedule for classes um, and for the coursework. So if the faculty information can't be found in this content browser, where do you go? So luckily right up here at the top, content is going to be your best friend. You click on the content button and this is going to be a condensed kind of list version of the content of this course. So you'll see right here, I. Um, on the left hand side of the screen, there are uh, you know, the table of contents. And this uh, has a summary of all of the information below it, but you can also click into a specific section. So start here, that's the first section. All right, more information will be added. Then we're getting into the faculty information here. Uh, so here, Again, you have my name, yay. You have my pronouns, she, her, hers. Uh, you have my email address, the best way to get to, uh, to contact me. Um, and then you'll also see that uh, I have office hours. So this again is a Zoom meeting. That's how all of ours are gonna be. Um, and it is Monday through Thursday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. And these, you can just drop in have a small question about an assignment or uh, anything like that, you can come to my office hours. There will be times that I uh, require you to meet with me. Um, 
And if the office hours time does not work, we will schedule a different time. Uh, I, my schedule might be a little, <laughs> it's kind of flexible-ish, so I am happy to meet with you at other times. Uh, just email me to ask and let me know. Then uh, after faculty information, we have the weekly modules. And this list of the entirety of all the content is getting a little much. So I'm gonna go straight to weekly modules. And you'll see once I clicked on weekly modules, it opened up all of these modules because we have 16 weeks of this course. There are 16 modules. Uh, we're gonna go to week one. Yay, you'll see. Um, because I actually went to the course page to open up the Zoom link for our meeting today. It tells me that I've done 50% of the two topics. Cool. Uh, kind of keeping me on track. But then we've got this checklist for week one module. Every week we'll have a module, which is going to basically think of it like a container, and the container is holding all of the tasks that you need to do this week. So as a student, right, I can see that um, I have week one tasks here. I've done that. I'm going to click it and see, I get the satisfaction of, of seeing that I've done 25% of the four items. Then I can see, oh, I need to take the grammar assessment quiz. I need to introduce myself to my classmates and I need to write a diagnostic essay. Uh, now these you'll all do on your own time, but when you click on uh, the here, it will take you within Brightspace, possibly to another Brightspace window um, to uh, take the quiz. So here, um, sorry, I, just, I have something in the way on my screen, so I just wanna make sure that, nope. Okay, there we go. Huh. I apologize. I'm not seeing the start button for this quiz. And even though I am not technically a student, this should be here. Click start quiz to begin attempt one. I may have to come back and look at this um, more so. Let me make a note of that for myself. Um, yes, so the grammar quiz is making me think, all right, I may have skipped over an important thing. So here we are in English 101, and we also have English 097. Uh, those two courses, uh, as you know, um, right, we're technically right now in 101 because it goes from 8 to 920, and then um, 097 goes from 930 to 1050. That's a long time. <laughs> uh, so we will be taking some breaks. But the thing is, is that 097 is a course meant to really help support everything we're doing in 101. Uh, and for me, all the tasks are very interconnected. If you're working on grammar, that's going to help every uh, part of your writing. And so uh, for me, it was simpler to have one streamlined um, Brightspace page than to have two Brightspace pages, even though that is already set up. Um, so everything for 097 is also on this 101 course page. And um, that, uh, that hopefully is going to keep it a little simpler. Uh, let's go back to content here for a second because I'm going to show you another uh, important thing here. Let's start here. Okay, we're gonna do it this way. Uh, 
All right, so I want to, uh, okay, so I see a, a note from somebody, uh, someone else is able to click on start quiz. It might be because I created it. Uh, Brightspace is fun like that. Uh, thank you, thank you for um, letting me know that you are able to see the start quiz function. All right, uh, so let's talk a little bit about the syllabus. Now, I'm not gonna read this whole syllabus to you because I'm not sure you can see, but this is 10 pages long because it needs to be. A syllabus is written to be a kind of contract between you and me and the school. It's meant to assure that you are getting a quality education that meets certain learning goals of English 101. That makes so no matter who you take English 101 from, there might be very different approaches, but you're gonna come out learning and knowing similar things. So the big thing that I wanna focus on, ask for what you want, ask for what you need. I may say no, but you won't know until I ask, until you ask. So uh, if you need an extension, if you have a question that you think is, is a bad question, all right, I don't care. You should ask, <laughs> right? You already know that the worst answer I could give you is no. And so that should, I hope that empowers you to be able to ask questions because that's why I'm here, right? Um, I have uh, email, um, this number here. Uh, oh, I should, I'm gonna make sure I put that on Brightspace, but that is actually a Google Voice number. So Google Voice uh, is a way that I can, like this is not my actual cell phone number, but Google Voice, if you text that number, Google Voice will send that text to my actual cell phone, but I'm not giving out my personal information. So um, if you have a question, you can also uh, text or call that number. I'll be honest, texting is probably better. Um, I, I don't enjoy talking on the phone, but I will. I will if you need. All right, so whew, required materials. Like I've told you before, you don't need much because I'm going to be providing um, the reading materials uh, through Brightspace, but you will need to have some kind of notebook that you can do free writes in. Um, and uh, if you prefer to type things, you can also do that for our free writes. Um, we're going to get to a free write in a little bit. Um, you definitely need internet access and I do recommend computer access. Uh, Dictionaries and thesaurus, these can be online. I'll show you the easiest one for me is dictionary.com. I'm gonna drop this in the chat just so um, it's easy for everyone. But dictionary.com, right? If we're thinking, well, here we have a new word, tuberous. I don't actually know what tuberous means. I'm gonna say maybe it's jubilant or happy, um, oh, and it's the opposite. Okay, this is why dictionaries are great, right? You can help build your vocabulary here. It's an adjective, so this is a descriptive word, uncertain and reluctant, dubious, undecided. Mm, I felt juberous about something. Mm. All right, so uh, when you go up here, you can also uh, see thesaurus. So a dictionary gives you the meaning of the word. What uh, it's, uh, you can also look up where the word came from and examples of it in sentences, right? To tell you the truth, I've, I've been jubilous about that loan proposition ever since dad put his name on it. Cool. Uh, if you go to thesaurus, a thesaurus is going to help you find other words that mean the same thing. So this is a great way to expand your vocabulary. So I'm gonna take juberous, this word that I just learned today. Oh, someone's saying that there is um, an app for dictionary.com. That's fantastic. I recommend getting that. Um, and you see, juberous didn't bring up a thesaurus thing. Um, so let's try 
happy because I'd rather look up happy words, right? So a lot of people know the word happy, but maybe you're thinking, I need to have a more interesting word. Uh, well, you have synonyms for happy, cheerful, contented, delighted, ecstatic, elated. Lots of options here, right? Um, so uh, there may also be an app for thesaurus.com. That would be great. Uh, so um, I'm going to try to collect a, a list of apps for y'all that might be help, helpful. Um, the other one I want to show, show you that is a helpful, um, and this is an app that you can download on your phone or any of your electronic devices, um, it's called Grammarly. Now, I believe I'm already logged in here, maybe. Um, yeah, it's taking me right, right to the app or the website. Um, yeah, so I'll do it again. Okay. Uh, but Grammarly is essentially an extension that can be on your web browser, um, and um, it helps, it gives you suggestions for spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Now, um, I'm working on trying to get all of you a, a subscription to Grammarly because uh, there is a free version and at least you should try and use the free version of Grammarly uh, because it is excellent. It is, it catches grammar mistakes at a higher rate than Word does. Um, okay, and I see the app for dictionary.com does both the, uh, work as a thesaurus and a dictionary. Thank you, Ashley. That is very good to know. Um, yes, and uh, Christina, yes. So I'm not sure where uh, the syllabus uh, went for Brightspace. That seems, uh, that is something that I will make sure by the end of today the syllabus is on Brightspace. Um, I pulled it up within, from my own documents here. So, um, I will make sure that by the end of the day, this is definitely up on Brightspace for you. So the main point of this class, right? Um, uh, development of critical and analytical skills in writing and reading of expository prose, writing and analysis of essays, letters, and reports, with an emphasis on clarity and logical development. Basically, can you write about something and show that you've thought about it seriously and are considering different sides, uh, different opinions, and when it's read, does it make sense, right? That's kind of the main goal of, of writing as I see it, is, is you're wanting to communicate some idea. Um, here we have the list of student outcomes. So every activity that I design, I am designing it so it meets at least one, if not hopefully like multiple, of these specific learning outcomes. All right, <clears throat> grades, yes, we have to have them. Uh, you'll see uh, quizzes are 10% of the grade, participation is 20%, uh, papers, these are the earlier drafts and the finals are 20%, and scaffolding assignments, which are other little assignments that will help you build your essays um, and your writing, um, are worth 20%. Um, and then the final portfolio is worth 30%. So for this English department, um, and for um, several of the city colleges, the portfolio is a way to look and see, have you grown as a writer over the course of the semester? Uh, so um, instead of say having a timed final where you have to write an essay in two hours, uh, because nobody writes essays that way <laughs> in a professional setting, um, uh, instead of that, you're able to work on your writing throughout the semester and compile them into a portfolio at the end. Um, and so that portfolio uh, is important and we'll be talking a lot more about the portfolio um, later in the semester. The important thing to keep in mind right now is that um, all of the essays and writing you're doing are going to be um, considered for the portfolio. Uh, so uh, 
keep that in mind. You don't want to skip too many assignments because that will affect your portfolio. I have had students complete the portfolio and not pass the class uh, because they did not do the assignments before to make sure that their essays were really good in the portfolio. Um, if you don't pass the portfolio, it is worth 30% of your grade. <clears throat> so if we have 100%, right, that's everyone, maybe not everyone's goal, because uh, let's have healthy goals of personal success, no matter what that is. Uh, but 100%, if you take away 30% of that, you're left with 70%. To pass this class, you have to get at least 70%. That means if you fail the portfolio, you would have to get 100% in quizzes, participation, papers, and scaffolding assignments to pass the class. I have never had a student do that. It has never happened. So the final portfolio is very important. However, uh, if you do the other things, the portfolio will not be challenged. It will be a task, but it will be totally possible if you keep up with the other assignments. All right. Um, <clears throat> bit about etiquette. My biggest thing is that you're respectful of yourself, me and your peers. Um, again, if your camera's on, wear clothing. Have your microphone muted when you're not using it so we're not hearing um, a lot of background noise. Um, if you can, limit distractions in your study area. I leave it vague because I don't know what your, you know, situation is. Maybe you have 17 cats. If so, please send me pictures. Uh, uh, yes. Um, if you need to use the restroom during a live session, uh, please leave your electronic device in a different room before doing so. Uh, accidents happen of like cameras being turned on or microphones getting turned on and nobody needs to, to experience. Uh, that. Um, and then this class is anti-racist. That's a typo that I'm going to fix right here. Uh, Anti-hate and anti-bullying. Anyone who is writing or speaking in an intentionally racist, homophobic, xenophobic, sexist, or hateful way will be asked to leave class. If it continues, I will just kick you out of the Zoom. Um, we are sharing the space and should be kind and considerate to each other. Uh, and it is challenging when um, there's a lot of divisive energy within our uh, country right now. Uh, but in this space, we're just going to be kind and considerate of each other. And when we hear an opinion that's maybe different than ours, to listen, but also examine, right? Um, <clears throat> like I said um, earlier, if you are unwilling to uh, consent to have your profile or video recorded, just keep your camera off. Um, oh, excellent question. So xenophobic. Xenophobic is um, being uh, scared, right? So phobic, right? We have homophobic. And so that phobic is usually a phobia or a fear. Um, so hom homophobic is fear of, um, queer or gay LGBT uh, people. Um, homo means the same. So it's used in that sense of like, oh, you love the same gender. Ah, I'm scared of you. Xenophobic is I'm scared of the other. And it usually means being scared of immigrants um, or people from other countries or places. Um, and so, you know, if someone says, go back to your country. That is a xenophobic statement usually of, of having fear of someone who is other and different. All of these fears um, can, can be very connected, right? They can, uh, someone can be xenophobic and homophobic at the same time, or they might not be, but um, yes. So I hope that answers uh, your question. Um, but also a great plug now for our, um, the dictionary app or dictionary.com. But please always ask, especially if I use uh, a word that is new to you, I'm happy to look up the de definition or define it as best as I can. Um, 
Email is the best way to get a hold of me. I try to answer emails within 24 hours. Um, I usually do not respond on Saturdays. Um, I, I like to have at least one day a week that's pretty set aside. Um, for attendance, sorry, scrolling weirdly. For attendance, um, I'm, I'm able to see all of your usernames, so I'm able to see who's attended the live sessions. And um, part of that is I'm seeing uh, when I'm asking for a question or a prompt or I put you in breakout rooms, are you participating? Um, you, will, you will be counted as present if you attend a live session or if you listen to the posted recordings of the live session and answer several questions within one week of the lecture being posted on Brightspace. So even if you've missed the live section, session, what I'm recording right now, you'll be able to uh, watch the recording um, and still get attendance credit. Late work, um, basically it's expected by the due dates on Brightspace, but if you need more time, um, that may happen, right? So uh, quizzes, participation, um, like watching a recorded lecture, paper drafts and scaffolding assignments that are turned in late without asking for an extension first will lose 10% every day late and will not be accepted after one week. Uh, late papers will only be accepted late if an extension has been given by me first. The final portfolio cannot have any extensions, just where it falls in the semester, I have to be able to grade it. And it's, it is then read by another person in the English department. So they're helping gauge like, yes, the student rocks, they've really done it well. If you want an extension, you have to ask me before the assignment is due. Uh, right now, there may be huge other circumstances that come up. Please reach out to me if that's the case. Um, I do not ask for any evidence, okay? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that right up front, but uh, I don't need you to send me um, a death certificate for a loved one, okay? That's not, I, I, will, I will trust you. Um, but please, if, if something comes up and you need an extension, ask. All right, and we'll, we can probably work something out. Uh, if you don't ask, then I'm going to assume that you just decided not to do the assignment on time. All right. Uh, you can redo assignments. Um, please, again, just check in um, and we can um, talk about it. One thing that I do require is that you must meet with me or a tutor to plan on how you will redo the assignment before resubmitting. That way you can know that you're really um, growing that way. Redoing assignments is excellent. Um, all right, we're getting close to a time where I think uh, <laughs> I'm tired of reading the syllabus, but I've read it before. There's still good information on here. Uh, plagiarism, if you knowingly, if you take someone else's words and use them and try to pass them off on your own, that is plagiarism. Uh, we are going to be talking about ways to avoid plagiarism. Um, so if I write a comment or give feedback saying, hey, it looks like this may be somebody else's words, take that seriously, but work to make the changes. Don't intentionally try to pass things off as your own. It is very easy for me to tell. I have, I have software that can check for it as well. Um, so please know that part of the course is learning to identify and avoid plagiarism. Uh, I understand you may make mistakes, um, please work to fix them. But if you continue to plagiarize, especially in the final drafts of papers and in the portfolio, you will receive a zero or an F. Um, it's considered a theft of intellectual property um, to use someone else's words as your own. It's deceitful, um, it's not always intentional, uh, but it's definitely something we'll work on avoiding. Um, if, if you have not participated, you're all here, so that's, that's a good step. Um, uh, but to be considered actively pursuing this course, 
you need to have at least 50% of assignments turned in by the midterm. If you have not done that much work by the midterm, um, I will drop you. And the reason I have that policy is because I have found that students that do not turn in at least half of their assignments by the midterm point will not pass the class because you're not doing the work. And writing is different than other disciplines in that, well, right, if you're taking um, a chemistry course and you have to learn the table of elements, right, and you memorize all those elements, great, you can check that box. But writing, uh, there are a lot of ways to write correctly. And so it takes practice to learn how to be using your own uh, voice, your own writing style, and to also learn how to edit your papers. So if you're not doing the assignments, uh, your chances for success are a lot less. All right. Okay, we have uh, different sections here. Once um, uh, uh, someone did point out that I do have the syllabus on here. I hid it from myself though. So I'm going to go back to table of contents. Um, I say I hid it from myself, but I just forgot where I'd put it. Under start here, Hmm. This may again be one of those things that my Brightspace is not showing um, here because I have a note saying the syllabus is on the second start here folder on the content browser. Let's see if this just gets it. Hmm. Okay, I will work on the syllabus more, but uh, once I make sure that the syllabus is up, you'll be able to follow um, some of these internal links, these underlined blue ones, if you want to read the part of uh, the student handbook that some of these are taken from. I'm not able to share your information with anybody uh, except you, your academic advisors sometimes. Um, and if I get a court order, all right, so even if a family member of yours emails me and says, hey, um, Christina's in my class, I really want to know how she's doing, I'm going to say, sorry, I cannot even acknowledge, I cannot even confirm that that student is in my class. And that's to protect you, your rights as a student. Um, so just know that. That's why I ask about the, uh, like, if your cameras are on or anything, you're consenting to being filmed as well. Um, we have useful resources here. Again, these are also all available online. Okay, so coming back to um, English 101 and 1050, the first assignments that we have this week are designed to be giving you a, a starting, for us to, for me as an instructor, to understand where you are as a writer right now. It's, uh, so the assignments that are this week, um, several are pass fail, meaning if you do it, you pass. <laughs> if you don't, you will not, right? So um, this week, it's more about me learning where you are. Uh, so what I want to do um, is what we're going to do is our first free write. So I'm going to share here. Um, you should be able to see kind of a whiteboard now. And um, type our free write here. So we have a kind of two-pronged question here. So what, I would want, I, what I'd like you to do um, is that you can either type this um, into the chat box and send it, and send it to me, or um, you can handwrite it uh, and, um, and like, take a picture of it to send to me. Um, I say this because I write better with my hands 
it's just what I prefer. So, but what we're going to do is um, on your own right now for about five minutes, I want you to answer these questions as fully as you can. All right, so I, I already see one in um, the box uh, in the chat here, that's great. Um, I'm going to uh, mute myself for three minutes um, and we're going to uh, write for that time for about three to five minutes. We'll have about two more minutes here.
Oh, right. Um, yes, Jamira, I did get it. I just uh, texted you back asking for your name. So thanks for checking there. Uh, it seems the Google Voice number works. I'm very excited about that. Uh, so um, these are excellent reasons that you all are sharing. If you aren't quite done and you want to still send something in, you can definitely, please do. Um, so I'm, I really like, you know, there are many reasons to write. It's a form of expression. I'd say that word express. I'm seeing a lot of people share that word. And I think that's so accurate, right? We're writing to, for something inside of us to get out and for it to be shared with other people. And, you know, hopefully with the idea that um, it not only helps ourselves, I love that I'm seeing um, uh, people saying it helps them organize their thoughts. It's a creative outlet. Um, uh, helps being able to communicate. Um, yeah, uh, these are all excellent reasons to write. And no matter what field you are going into, you will be writing. Uh, you know, maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm going to be an x-ray tech. You know, I'm going to be uh, just looking at x-rays and, you know, being with patients. Well, you're still going to have to fill out paperwork at that point. And even to be hired, you'll probably have to write a resume, a cover letter. Um, now that everything is online for at least well, at least many, many things are happening online and virtually right now, you might be spending more, sending more emails than you normally do. So all of that writing has a specific purpose, right? Um, I, I love that, Jasmine, you write to tell a story. Yes, uh, you're getting, um, I started reading a, a, a really fun um uh, fantasy novel recently and and I'm just like yes this is I'm stepping into this really different world and experiencing something different and it feels kind of nice um, so while this the writing that we're doing may feel less creative than say um, something you'd write just for yourself trust that your own voice and your own thoughts are really important here uh, academic writing is a lot about um, looking at different topics and ideas and you read outside information and you bring that outside information in and you have it in your paper as quotes or paraphrases you're citing your sources that's going to be something we talk a lot giving credit to where you got that information so you're not plagiarizing um, and you're also showing that you're connecting to a larger world um, but it's not just about oh look I found information right, your idea of how that information connects and what meaning can we bring out of that is so important. All right, it is 9.02. Um, there's a little more that we need to do today, but I want us to all take a break um, to step away from our computers for a little bit, maybe stretch, get a glass of water, some more coffee. All right, so we will be back here at 10.15. Sorry, not 10.15, it's 9. 9.15, all right. <laughs> so we'll be back at 9.15. All right, so we'll see you in a little bit and then we'll have a more active section.
Okay, we're getting back here. I just want to make sure that everybody is able to be back in the room. I've got one message about um, Zoom not working. Let's see. Some people say that they're back. Right. Okay, yes, thank you for sharing. If you're able to be back, just again, put that word back, back in the chat. Um, I'm gonna respond to someone who does not seem to be, okay, all right. Um, so if there's um, an issue with Zoom for a different, course or a different instructor. Unfortunately, I'm not sure uh, if I can be too helpful with that at this time. Um, uh, <laughs> my This is my assumption is that um, you know, City Colleges has accounts with Zoom um, that they're paying for that allow us to do these sessions. I'm assuming that there's just a lot of people on Zoom um, and that might be causing some problems across the city colleges district. That's my theory, right? I don't have my evidence to support it quite yet, but that's my theory. Um, alrighty, so we are going to keep on going here. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's see, oh, I can clear, clear all drawings, boom. Awesome. Um, so one thing that I really want us to learn um, is more about each other. So uh, what I'm going to be doing So the first thing that I'll be doing soon is I'll be putting you into breakout rooms. So this means you'll be in your own little like pod of, um, I believe three or four people. Um, the next thing you'll wanna do is you'll wanna introduce yourself to your group. Just, I know we can see each other's names, but it'll be a little more personal and interactive. If you actually wanna use your microphones, you're welcome to, but of course, if you're not comfortable with that or not able to, the chat box will be fine. Um, then as a group, you'll uh, answer the question, What specific things would you like to learn this semester? This could be about punctuation, grammar, spelling, um, about organization, and more. Anything to do with writing, right? If you are wanting to learn, like you're, as a group, you're gonna come up um, with several answers, right? Because uh, this is gonna really help me. What you'll need, is to designate one person to share the questions with me, one person to keep track of time, and one person to be kind of the group leader, right? Someone who might be willing to speak up and make sure you're staying on task, right? And not just talking about, uh, I don't know, anything. Um, all right, so um, what will happen is when um, you're put into a breakout room, you may not be able to see my screen. All right, so um, I'm going to leave this up here. Uh, I am going to copy and paste actually into the chat. Um, so uh, you can um, see it there. Um, I want to make sure that uh, if you want to take a picture of this as well with your phone, just so you know you have this, um, 
please do, because once you're in the breakout rooms, I am not in those rooms. I can go into each one, but um, I may not. So the, the purpose of this is to connect with your fellow classmates a little more, and also to start thinking of what do you want to learn this semester? That way I can have that information and can help you reach those goals. All right, so let me put you into breakout rooms. Okay, um, once you're in the rooms, um, I will be giving, um, hmm, how much time do you think we need? Eight minutes or should we do more than eight minutes? All right, we're gonna start with, um, <laughs> we're gonna say 9.30 is going to be our end time. Um, and so, um, some of you will be in groups with, most of you are in groups of three people, a couple of you are in groups with two people, um, so, and that's all right. So, yes, let's start here. I'm going to open the rooms, and at uh, 9.30, we'll be uh, breaking that, um, okay. I'm going to open the rooms now. Uh, any questions before I do this? Awesome. Okay. You should have now received an invitation to join a breakout room. Go ahead and accept that. I can see when you've uh, jumped into that room here.
All right, good to see some of you back out of those break rooms. Uh, for those who may be watching the recorded version of this, um, I want you to also uh, be sending me your some different things that you want to learn in this class. You can do that by sending me an email with those, or you can um, text them to the Google Voice number. I will be putting that number on break space by the end of the day. Um, okay. I have a student with some audio issues. I'm gonna see if I can. You know, unfortunately on my end, there's nothing I see that I can do. All right, so welcome back. Um, I would love to hear uh, from you, either if the person who uh, is going to share the answers with me, if they want to send them to my email, to the Zoom chat, or to um, my Google Voice number, um, I can, uh, or if you would like to, take your microphone off mute and say the things I would love to hear uh, from you. So, yes, um, what would you like to learn this semester? Um, I was in group five, mm -hmm. I guess, with Jasmine and Gabriel. I think I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I butcher your name. Um, Jasmine, Gabriel and I all wanted to work on punctuation and organization and I also threw in better verbiage just because you know using the same words in your essays doesn't really make your essays good it's good to switch your verbiage up oh yeah for sure those are great things I see from Christina uh, we hope to expand our vocabulary work on grammar learn how to articulate ourselves more professionally excellent we're Brianna and Jay awesome I was with Jennifer and Crystal, and my group decided that we want to know, we want to learn more about punctuation, grammar, and being organized, as well as like being able to support our, um, our, our point of views, getting better mm. at that. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, you're going from, you know, kind of we think of small order concerns, things we're not as worried about. Actually, spelling and grammar sometimes falls into that, whereas oh, am I able to support my argument? That's a lot harder to answer versus is the word spelled correctly? Um, so that's one of the larger order concerns. Um, excellent, thank you for sharing that. Okay. So Hello, um, I was in a group three with T and Asia and we talked about uh, punctuation and grammar and we wanna focus on that and it contributes to organizing and it all plays in a row within the three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Punctuation and grammar uh, are, are, it can be really tricky. I'm excited to help uh, you learn more about those as well as organization. And I see here from Rosalind, we have, uh, my team and I agreed that although our ideas seem ideal, it is hard to remain organized and clearly translate those ideas on paper. Yes, so that is a big thing uh, that I like to, talk about and why I structure assignments the way I do of like helping you get what you have in your head onto the paper. Sometimes that is really hard. Um, yeah. And, and especially, especially if you're not comfortable with it or if you're thinking, Oh, I don't know. I put stuff on paper and it's not that great, but we will be working on, on that this semester for sure. And more about grammar and punctuation. Awesome. I see from, uh, is it Natasha? 
uh, I was in group one, I think with Saul, we both talked about wanting to work on organization, grammar, and punctuation. All right, so I'm definitely seeing organization, grammar, and punctuation um, coming into, um, yes, making notes to myself of which ones are kind of getting the most votes. Excellent. Uh, so speaking of grammar, um, I'm going to share my screen again um, just to talk to you about some of the assignments that will be done this week. So with grammar, I am so glad that you're um, all wanting to learn more of it. That's kind of, that's one of the purposes of 101 and 97 working together. Uh, the challenges with grammar uh, are that um, it's not always easy to learn because English takes from every other language, right? Uh, really starting way back when uh, Britain liked to colonize or um, take over other countries, including, you know, the US, uh, Hong Kong. I mean, they went everywhere and were like, hey, we're English, we're cool. We just want to take things we want and we'll use what we want and we're going to make up our own rules. That is a very general summary of the history of the English language, but English basically, it has a lot of challenges, but there are some good tricks and ways to get more comfortable um, with grammar. And one of the things that I'm going to be using to see more specifically of what type of grammar you uh, maybe need to learn is with this grammar assessment quiz. Now this is 10 questions. Um, you may, so it's, it's fairly simple. You may have um, an easy time with the quiz, you may not. No matter how you do, uh, you will get 100% for completing the quiz. It's just for me to be able to see more specifically what types of punctuation or what types of grammar you may need to, uh, uh, a little extra help with. Um, as like most, most people are pretty good with knowing that at the end of a question, uh, you put a question mark, right? That's a, that's a punctuation mark that is fairly straightforward to use. Um, whereas apostrophes and commas and semicolons have a lot more rules and possibilities. Um, so uh, right here, I'm in the checklist for week one. Um, I, so I have the attend the session, yeah, the grammar quiz. Um, and then here I'm gonna take you to uh, a discussion board assignment. So while uh, these live sessions, we do have discussions, it was so good to hear some of your voices um, because not every student may be able to attend all live sessions. The discussion boards will become a lot of where our discussion and classroom community will happen. Um, so I want you to introduce yourself a little more thoroughly um, in a discussion board. So I click here. Um, <clears throat> so the main prompt, choose a funny, fo a fun photo of yourself, a pet, a plant, or a loved one. I know that some of you may not want to share a picture of yourself or maybe not of your a family member, but something that makes you happy, right? Um, if you choose to just post a picture of, say, a mug, I have a mug here that says big hug mug, right? Makes me happy. Maybe I'll share a picture of that, right? A picture that says something about you. Then you're going to respond with full sentences. Why did you choose your photograph? What is one thing that excites you about school this fall term? What is one thing that scares you about this about school this fall term? And what song, musical group, band, artist are you listening to the most right now? Um, so ah, we already see one here, which is great. Um, what you'll do is you see here start new thread that is how you're going to respond so when you click new thread you'll start with a subject matter subject uh subject line hmm. forgetting the technical word for this box um yes and introduction of me right however i might want to put it you can also just put your name 
this is an area for you to get creative. Um, just so you know, to upload a picture, um, you see if I hover my mouse over, it says insert stuff. Um, if I click on that, I can scroll uh, and you can see there are a lot of different things. I don't actually want to insert that. It's the camera, right? Okay, so the little camera icon is actually add a file. So this is where I can choose a, a photo from my computer, which is more of how I know to do things. Click upload. And I already know that I have one on my desktop. that I want to upload and I'm going to hit add. And this box comes up and um, it, it, I believe it will pop up for everyone, but it may not. Now, alternative text is something that um, is really good to do. It is specifically for uh, students who uh, need uh, screen readers uh, to read their screen. So if a student has visual impairments uh, where they cannot read the text on the screen um, and they can't see the image, this is basically a description of the image that will be read to the student um, so they can know what the picture is of. Um, now, if this picture does not convey any information, if I just decided to put a picture of a cat for fun, select this image is decorative. There's nothing that's essentially essential for me to know. I might say this is a, an image of the instructor, right? So I could describe myself further um, if I wanted to for sure. Um, hit okay. And you'll see this huge photo pop up. Paid a lot of money for these headshots. I want to use them. Uh, <laughs> they're several years old. Um, so I, I can shrink it down if I want because I'm not feeling like I need a huge, huge, huge photo of myself here. Shrink it down and then I hit enter and I can start answering these questions. Right. So um, I am, uh, once I was done, um, now, I haven't answered all the questions, so I'm not done, but you'd hit post, right? And then it'll pop up underneath here. You can see everybody's. I'm not going to post that at this time. I'm going to answer more thoroughly. Uh, and discussions, I'm going to be uh, responding to each of yours as well. Um, so let's go into this. All right, Nadia. Um, Right, so here we have that image, we have that, but the important thing here too is I can now reply to this thread. So while I haven't read this whole thing, I'm seeing Frank Ocean here. Oh yeah, I like Frank Ocean. Now part of the discussion boards are that you're going to need to respond to um, other students. And um, I have some here. Uh, some directions here. Okay, I'm gonna have to backtrack a little because Brightspace organizes things differently. So when I was in content, I was in the weekly one module, right? The checklist for week one. And I used this link here to go to the introduction discussion board. And it's taken me to the very specific board where I can start a new thread. You'll see here that there's this uh, discussions list and kind of this arrow pointing right to view topic. This means that this is a subsection, like an internal smaller section of the discussions list. So when I click discussion list, it's going to take me to the list with all of the discussions available. And here is where I also have di uh, directions on how to respond to your classmates. Uh, because a lot of times, um, students uh, respond being like, yeah, you're right, and that's it, right? But online, we have to be engaging more thoroughly. So, um, 
So to get the full points for your discussion, you must post your own response and then respond to two classmates. Um, when you respond to a post, be sure to be as detailed and specific as you can. Uh, you'll hear me often say specific, specificity is key, right? If we're narrowing down and getting more specific language for what we're saying. Um, so this is um, an example and a good template to follow if you're not sure how to respond to someone's post. Right, mention something specific that their photo makes you think of, right? And hopefully it's a positive thing, right? You don't wanna be like, oh, your photo reminds me of uh, like the worst meal I ever ate. Oh, no, I wanna be reminded about happy things, right? Uh, and, and keep things in a little more, po at least not an attacking way. I think you'll all be fine with this. Um, mention something specific in their photo that makes you think that their photo makes you think of. So here I say, your dog is so cute, right? Every, every pup is cute. Um, connect to your experience. Example, I don't have a dog, but I used to be a dog walker. That is a true fact about me. Uh, like two years ago, I was a dog walker. So I was looking for work, I just moved to Chicago. Oh, those were good pups. Uh, build off of that even further, connecting to the larger world, right? So you're starting by focusing on the person you want to connect with. You're connecting them to yourself by relating to, like, uh, sharing a bit about yourself that connects to what they shared. And then you're going to kind of try to connect it to the larger community of our classroom, of Malcolm X College, of the U.S., of the world. Um, I think that if everyone had a dog, or at least some kind of pet, that the world would be a happier place, right? So um, that's kind of leading of, of giving my perspective of that people should definitely have pets in their life. Um, and right, this is an overassumption. You know, I don't have a pet right now, but I do think I'd be happier if I did. Um, and I have here 3A or 3B. So you can build off, connect to a larger world, or ask a question that keeps the conversation going. Uh, and this question, try and avoid questions that can be answered yes or no. So if I ask, does your dog bark at people? Am I starting a conversation? Not really, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get, yes, or no. I might get more elaboration, but the better kind of question here is what's called an open-ended question. Uh, what kind of personality does your dog have? Right? Now I'm going to get more information back. It's going to be more of a conversation here. And what this template shows me as a teacher is that you are paying attention to the post that you're reading and that you're creating a response that is intentional. It's not just oh, I have to say like, wow, cute dog, even if the dog is super cute, right? Asking for a little bit more here. Um, so when you go into, uh, so now here we're under the main discussions heading, you can also get here uh, by going under assessments and clicking discussions, and it'll take you to all of the discussions that are visible for you right now. Future weeks in the course, I have not made visible yet. I'm still fine tuning some things. Um, and that's why you won't see uh, like the other modules open yet. But I can click, I'll have to click into the specific topic. And then I'll have to uh, click in to read a response. And then I can click reply to thread and that's where I'm going to craft um, my response to Nadia. Uh, what questions are there about dis the discussion post for this week? If you have a question, you, uh, go feel free to put it in the chat um, and I'll definitely get to it. All right, so I'm going back to 
our checklist here. So once I've done that, right, um, once you've posted, go ahead and read other students' posts. I was not able to link to other students' posts because you're going to choose who you respond to. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So the last um, thing here, which is the largest assignment uh, for the week, is the diagnostic essay. So the grammar assessment quiz is to establish certain things about your grammar. Are you able to identify and name um, and choose the correct sentence, that sort of thing. Um, the diagnostic essay is going to look at how do you understand writing an essay on your own right now? Um, how many of, of you took, um, I don't know if that's a good question actually to ascertain what I mean. Uh, let's go into the assignment. If I refine my question, I might ask it. Um, okay, so here we have the diagnostic essay. Um, so this essay um, is one that is used again to create that baseline of on your own right now if you're asked to, add, or to write an essay what would that essay be like and this essay is that essay right we're going to ask you to write an essay on wednesday and so the time allotted is wednesday um, august 26 starting at 8 a.m this is our normal class time um, we will not be meeting live, but I have decided I am going to um, email out a Zoom link where if you want to talk to me about this essay, you can. Um, but it is not something that you should be stressing a lot about. These essays, um, at the very end of the semester, you'll write a reflective essay and you'll compare, you'll look back to this first essay and you'll say, how have I grown as a writer? So if there are mistakes um, or if some ideas are not super clear, that's okay, all right? This essay is not about perfection. It is about uh, giving a good effort so you can see, okay, what, where am I in my writing ability, all right? And again, you turn this essay in, you get full credit. If you do not turn it in, you do not pass the club course. And that is, um, <laughs> I have never had a student pass this class if they did not do the diagnostic essay, all right? So just do it. Okay, well, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about what this actually means. So the purpose is to assess at what level a student is at the beginning of this course. The grading is pass fail. The time estimate, this should take you between one and three hours. Um, it may take you more or less time. Uh, this is kind of an estimate of what I think of time you should take. If you are spending less than an hour, I would reconsider that. Take it a little more seriously than that. If you're spending more than three hours, you might be doing a little too much for this assignment. And we'll get to the prompt specifically. So uh, one of my functions in the English department, uh, as well as being a full-time faculty member, um, is I help grade English placement tests. Now, some of you may have taken them. Um, they help uh, give you, oh, do I, do I land in this English course? Do I land in this one? Do I land in this one, right? Um, and I read them and I can see the time that students take on them. And I will say that the students that did the best spent more time than the students that didn't. It wasn't always the case. Uh, but for example, if you spend 15 minutes on this essay, that is not enough time. All right, even if this is an easy subject for you to write about, take more time. Allow yourself to read it over again and just see what you think, all right? We usually do this as a live in-class thing, but that works best in a classroom, like face-to-face -face scenario to me. So the prompt is this. 
please write a brief essay, four to five paragraphs, reflecting on your relationship with literacy. What role does literacy play in your personal life, in your career, and your creativity? Uh, what moments influenced your relationship to reading and writing inside and outside of the classroom? This assignment requires you to compose a narrative or a story of your experience with literacy, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, you'll take a moment to think critically about the struggles and achievements of, in your literacy history. Uh, what sort of feedback from teachers, parental figures, or friends encouraged you? What discouraged you? Did you love or hate reading and writing, or were you taught to love it or hate it somehow? How do you learn? Does school work for you? You'll notice that these are very, this is a lot of questions here. And this, these are meant to be springboards, inspiration points. Uh, and that your essay should address multiple of them. Right, and uh, so this is going to, especially with organization, right? That's gonna be a big thing that I look and see where are your organizational skills right now when you're given a prompt like this that does not have that much specific direction, right? It's open-ended questions. Um, uh, I'm seeing some questions in the chat. Um, when are the two assignments due? Um, they are due, um, I'll show you uh, soon. This is the essay you'll be doing on Wednesday. You can start it early and you can turn it in early if you would like. Um, uh, you'll see here the due date is August 28th. So that's this Friday at 11.30 p.m. Um, I am going to be sending out a link for Wednesday at 8 a.m. Um, that if you want a little extra guidance during it, um, you can pop in and see me, um, but we will not be, I won't be recording that session. That's just going to be, it's open. You can come and talk to me if you'd like. Um, but the time is being given to you because normally I would give a time, I would give a class and allow you to have the time in class face to face to write it. Uh, but since we're all in our own homes, uh, you can take a different time if you would if you would like um, okay so let's talk a moment about literacy um, would anyone be able to share in the chat what they think literacy is or how they would define literacy Anybody download that dictionary app yet? All right. Well, let's let's look at. Ooh, sorry, just bumped my laptop. Uh, <clears throat> Um, Ashley says reading and writing as to how it relates to your life. Marcella says, I think literacy is the ability to understand and interpret things. And those are both totally true. Literacy, right, we're going to get the deck. So um, words usually have um, uh, literacy is the ability to read and write also part of this. Yes. Um, so here we're going to see how the dictionary might um, here. Oh, right. Yes. Natasha says on the app, it says a person's knowledge of a particular subject. Um, yes. So literacy has several different meanings here. Um, the quality or state of being literate. And here we have a link we could look up the root word literate, especially the ability to read and write. Um, the possession of education, a person's knowledge of a particular field or subject. Right, so um, we talk uh, in um, like prepping, especially for an online class, we talk about computer literacy and computer literacy is specifically about how 
are you able to navigate and use a computer well, right? Um, are you like me, kind of clicking around a little bit, or is it more second nature? Usually that comes from practice. So when we're talking about literacy in um, the context of writing, we're talking about your relationship to reading and writing, how you understand the information. Do you have a book that is just, you want to devour it, it's so good? Um, or are you able to uh, express your thoughts well through your writing? And, and so when you think of it, what role does reading and writing play in your personal life? Right, maybe that's you. Uh, you text with your grandma every day, or you create um, uh, like tweets, tweet threads uh, to discuss a subject. Right, any type of reading and writing can uh, come into this. Um, how does reading and writing uh, like influence your career, your creativity? Right, earlier when I asked. Why do people write a lot of you said about expressing yourself, right? And expressing emotions and internal things. That, so that's an important part of how literacy is connected to that creativity, right? What if you could not read or write, right? And, and this also has you look at good or bad moments. So um, I know that I had a teacher in college who was very, very critical and mean honestly, about some of my poetry. And it was an, had a negative effect on me. I decided, oh, I, I should not write poems because I'm bad at it. And that just wasn't true. I was not practiced at it. I had a lot to learn, but the fact that the teacher made me feel like, oh, I shouldn't write poems at all was a negative experience. Right? And so maybe there's something like that that you remember that you want to share, but hopefully there's also a good moment or two that you can talk about, right? Maybe um, as a kid, you had a favorite book and your sibling always read it to you. Um, yes. So what you'll do uh, for this um, prompt is I recommend typing it in Word. Now, if you scroll down here, you'll see submit assignment. You have to upload a file to be able to submit it. Um, the comment section here is if you want to say something about your file, like this is my um, diagnostic essay, right? Um, some students will say, will have a note here about like um, something they're concerned about. You know, like, oh, could you really look at this paragraph? That can also work, but um, you'll want to add a file. So if you know, you're in your email and you open Word and you get here, right, and you um, have your document open, right, uh, at the top here, there's this new blank document. I can open this. It'll slowly load. What did I just do? <laughs> Sorry, I just scared myself. I thought I went back to like a weird thing. Okay. See, that's kind of what I mean about computer literacy, right? Is I sometimes bumble a little bit and it's fine. Um, so here, this has now opened. We have it, um, our Word document. We can immediately start typing. And we're going to organize uh, and write out our essay here. Um, then you'll need to download it in order to upload it to Brightspace. So here, if you go to File and Save As, you can download a copy or you can download as PDF. Either works for me. I'm not worried about either. Um, but once you do, say we download as a PDF. Um, the main reason why you might choose between a, a Word document and a PDF is that a Word document, if you download a Word document and share it, anyone else can change the words on the page. If you download it as a PDF, 
no one can edit it. So not that I'm gonna go in and edit your work for you. Uh, that's not quite my role for this assignment. Um, so it's totally up to you, but I've downloaded that and now I can um, click add a file. I'm gonna go to my computer, click upload. I'm gonna look at the downloads. Ah, yes, there's document 17 open. Uh, if it's a really large file, you might have to wait for a green bar to fully load, and then I can click add here. Now I see this file's added. I still have to submit. If you do not hit submit, I will not see this. So once you hit submit, you should see this file submission successful. Right, and then here, confirmation email sent successfully. I think I just got an email as well. And sure enough, I did. Uh, that's a really good um, way to just make sure that you know that your files have been uploaded successfully. If you have an issue with this, please email me and let me know. And I'll do my best to help or anything like that. So, um, Let's go back to our course home. Because there is a question about due dates. And within every assignment, there will be due dates. And I'm working on getting a comprehensive list. Um, I used to send out like a, a list of all the days things were due. <laughs> the thing is with any semester, at a certain point, we need more time on an assignment or I'm sick or uh, something's come up and I have to change all the due dates. So, uh, but here in Brightspace, you can look at upcoming events and you'll see that the grammar assessment quiz is due August 28th, that is this Friday by 11.30 p.m. You can do the quiz at any time uh, and have it be on time and not late until 11.30 p.m. After that, it will be considered late. Um, so yes, this grammar quiz should take you about 15 to 20 minutes at, uh, I believe. Um, you can see the diagnostic essay is due also August 28 at 11.30 p.m. So if I were you, I'd look at these and say, okay, I have two things due on the same day at the same time. I'm going to decide which one I'm gonna do first and try to knock it out, right? One of the reasons I do have Wednesday is gonna be a block of time, just uh, you can work, you can see me via Zoom, um, is so that you do have specific time set aside. A thing I really wanna emphasize here is that Brightspace sometimes shows two uh, dates for something. So here you see it says due, and down here you see August 30, which is Sunday, grammar assessment quiz availability ends. And that means that after August 30, the quiz is completely closed and you will not have a chance to do the essay. Sorry, the, the quiz. Uh, you can do the quiz on August 29 or August 30, but it would be late. Uh, so when it's due, is it's like, yes, I, I, get, I get my full points for turning it in or I'll uh, not be penalized at all for it being late if I submit it by the due time. The availability is, okay, maybe work was really hectic and I knew that and I should have done my quiz on Tuesday, but I didn't. And now it's, it's Sunday at 11 p.m. I can still do my quiz and at least I get some points, right? It'll be marked late, but it'll still be still be good for me to do. But after availability ends, you cannot do it, all right? Not without talking to me about an, exception, um, an extension. I will say that for these things, I'm very hesitant to give out ex extensions. It's our first week, we kind of have to dive right in and these are um, just tools for me to see where you're beginning. So the more you put it off, the, uh, 
the less helpful it is for, for me and it makes your life more challenging. Uh, so um, once I've uploaded future modules, there will be more dates here that you'll be able to see. Um, yes, I'm gonna be adding important dates like um, November 3rd. I don't believe we have class on the 3rd. I don't think we need that day. Yeah, it's a Tuesday, but just so you know, um, if you have any classes on Tuesday, November 3rd, they should be canceled because um, Illinois has made, um, uh, that's election day, and Illinois has made election day a federal, uh, like a, a holiday for government workers. So uh, because the city colleges, uh, technically I'm a government employee, we do not work that day because <laughs> We all should vote. So the day is will also be off for you for those classes. So hopefully you can also vote. Um, throwing that out there. Okay. I'm gonna quickly look at my list here of things because there's so much to cover in the first day, right? We we haven't really dug into things um, too much. Uh, but hopefully this gives a good overview. Um, what I'd like to do is open this up. If anyone would like to take their mic off to ask a question or to type it in the chat, um, we're gonna wrap up. Um, our class technically ends at 10.50, uh, but um, honestly, we've, we've done a lot of processing. Um, I wanna make sure that I, uh, whatever questions you have that I'm able to answer. So let's, uh, uh, let's say a tentative uh, goodbye if you need to go, I understand. Um, but if you have questions, please stay on and ask me. All right, and if not, um, I will be emailing out the link for Wednesday if you wanna come hang out. If you wanna show up at my office hours later today, um, we gotta go back to faculty. <laughs> Um, information here, but you can also join my office hours. Um, through this link under faculty information. Um, so, uh, Joseph asks, we, will we only meet once a week, uh, through here? Normally, yes. Uh, there will be a couple weeks where, um, we will be having mandatory conferences one-on-one, -on -one, and for those weeks, you will have to show up for your conference, and it might be on Monday or Wednesday, but you would only have to show up for that conference. Um, and then it also will depend on how much you all want me. If there are some things, I may make optional ones. I'd always record them and post them on Brightspace, but Mondays would be the only day where the live one um, will be a regularly scheduled thing. Uh, does that answer your question, Joseph? Awesome, awesome, okay. Um, what other questions do you have? Uh, yes, unfortunately, uh, I need to keep a, a, a schedule for myself. Um, that's one way I try to keep like my mental health pretty well is keeping on a strict schedule. So uh, we will always have class starting at eight. Um, but again, um, the, rec the sessions will always be recorded. Um, and so once they're recorded, uh, it takes a little time for me to, uh, to upload the recording to Brightspace. But once it's on Brightspace, if you weren't able to make it at 8 a.m., right, for whatever reason, I'm not going to ask why you didn't make it, um, you'll have to record, um, or sorry, you'll have to watch the recording. And then um, you'll have to uh, like today, you sent me answers of your free write, right? Like, what does writing, like, why do people write? And you sent me information. Um, 
those types of prompts and uh, also the answering questions of what you want to learn in the class, um, you'll have to answer some of the prompts that are in the videos and send them to me. Um, and I'll make that more specific in the instructions when I post the videos of what you have to do to get those participation points if you weren't able to be at the live session. Thank you, T. Good question. Penalty for being tardy, grace period. The penalty is you miss what you miss. Um, <laughs> so if you show up 15 minutes late and I've already done a free write, you might just have to wait till the video is uploaded on Brightspace to see that first um, prompt. There's no, um, uh, for a grace period time, I'm probably gonna give about five minutes. I try to be pretty punctual. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to open Zoom meetings a little early, like by 7.45 or 7.50. Um, and then the first five to 10 minutes, we're gonna be focusing more on a free write. So if you get in a little late, you may still have time to get the question for the free write and start that on your own. Um, but the only penalty is that you'll have missed the very beginning of class, but you can always watch it on a video. Um, Crystal asks, how will attendance be taken on Wednesdays when we don't have Zoom meetings? The simple answer is, is it won't be. Um, so that's where um, remote learning is different from, online learning is different than face-to-face. -face. Okay, I'll break this down quickly. Face-to-face, -face, um, we're in a classroom together and we're right next to each other face-to-face. -face. Online is, um, there are no set times where you have to meet but there might be deadlines for assignments, so it's up to you to log on and do the work within a certain time frame. Remote learning is uh, kind of between the two. Um, you are sometimes, it's totally up to me, the instructor. So I want us to meet, I wanna have a live session at least once a week, but probably just once a week. Um, uh, and so, Honestly, for attendance, I'm just looking at, are you participating in the class? Did you show up to a live session or did you watch the recorded session and do that? Are you turning in your assignments on times? Those things are in the place of attendance. Um, so I hope that answers uh, your question, Crystal. Um, Marcella asks, for the Grammarly, you said that you are trying to get us a subscription. If you can't, does the free one work just fine? I love the free version and I've used the free version for years. Uh, the English department has recently um, gone about trying to acquire full subscriptions because the full subscriptions have a lot more um, tools and uh, information for you. The free version is excellent and you should definitely use it. But if we get subscriptions to the full one, it'll just benefit all of us. So. Get the free one, and then once we uh, get subscriptions, I'll share those with you. Thank you, Marcella. Excellent um, question. Like, Grammarly works for um, all your social media, too. So if you're making a caption on Instagram or you're updating your Tinder profile, like, you can make sure that you're using good grammar because that's a good thing to do. Mm, yes, yeah, so you have the premium. Oh, yeah, it is expensive. So I really hope we can get uh, the the full subscriptions for y'all. We're we're working on it. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Are the discussion board, do we just uh, reply to one student or several? I'd like you to respond to two, at least two. If you want to respond to more, you can. Uh, but remember, we're, we're kind of using this as a way to connect to multiple of our class, classmates. So um, respond to at least two. That's the minimum requirement.
Okay, excellent. Well, thank you, Marcella, for all of your questions. Um, and Ashley, thank you for yours as well. Really good. All right, seems like the questions have calmed down. Um, I'm probably gonna take my camera off and um, just hang around. I'm gonna start making, uh, doing some uh, work on Brightspace here to make sure I'm uh, getting all the information to you. Uh, and I'm gonna stop the recording, but if you would like to stay and um, ask some more questions, um, that will work wonderfully. All right, stopping the recording now.